Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome along to a new video. Short video today, this one is a short review and my thoughts on the EpoMaker SK61 mechanical keyboard. I haven't done an unboxing with this video because the box itself was pretty uh, uninspiring. Um, I'll in include a photo of the, the box here in the video as you can see. Um, but yeah, in the box you have the, the keyboard itself as you can see. A USB-C to USB-A cable and a keycap puller, a key switch puller which we'll come back to in a moment and replacement keys if you wanted to use this keyboard with an Apple system so this one's on a Windows machine as you can see we have the, the, the Windows key um, and the menu key and the Apple keys I'll put a photo of them in the video as well you have the command control and option that you can switch out with the keycap puller if using it on a, an Apple system. So a little bit about this keyboard. This is a 60% a keyboard. As you can see, it's quite a small form factor. It looks quite nice. This is a pink uh, and white keyboard that I bought for my daughter. This will look nice in her bedroom. Her impressions of the keyboard when I took it out of the box were very positive. And even typing with it for the first time, she was very impressed with how that was compared to some of the, the mechanical keyboards that I've used and had in the past. Um, this one was bought by me on the EpoMaker website for, I think it was just over £50 UK, so you're looking around about $65, I think was the, the price um, that you pay online with uh, free shipping over to the UK. Um, it is an ANSI layout keyboard, as you can see, uh, we don't have a, a pound symbol along the top here the at symbol is up here as well and the enter key is slightly shorter but as you're making other compromises with a 60% keyboard form factor um, I'm not too bothered about these and my daughter won't be either. Um, so the keyboard is um, it's, it's really really good quality. The moment I took out the box the weight of the keyboard is, is very good. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. It is within a plastic chassis um, or casing here uh, and there's very little, or to, almost no flex with it at all. It's, it's very, very solid. The bottom of the keyboard has some rubber feet, which keep it nice and sturdy on the back there. And there's no branding from the manufacturer at all. It's, uh, it's just very plain, very white. Uh, as I say, this will look very nice in my daughter's bedroom. On the back, you have a USB-C port where the cable runs and connects to the system. And this one being the SK61, this is not the Bluetooth model. This one will remain connected to the machine with uh, the USB-C there. Um, this one has the pink and white PBT keycaps. These ones are dice-up keycaps, which means they won't shine over time or that they're gonna be more durable to shining over time. Um, and they're very, very good quality. They're very nice to type on. If I had one negative comment, and you can see it in the, the frame at the moment, um, there is a little bit of light bleed comes through the keys, so if we take a look at the shift key here, just above the word shift, you can see that the light bleeds through some of the keycaps a little bit there. It's obvious in some more than others, you see it on the shift quite clearly, and the caps lock key as well, when you put that one on, um, that shows it also. The switches themselves are Gatron Red optical switches, they feel nice to type on. I'll do a little typing test in a moment, you can see how that sounds. Um, but yeah, these are nice and, and comfortable to type on, not too loud um, in, in my experience. Now one thing to mention, obviously a 60% keyboard doesn't have the, the cursor keys on there, but the cursor functionality is uh, replicated by holding the function key and using the, the four keys next to that for up, down, left and right. And that works very well. Obviously if you're using this for gaming, um, you'd probably use the W, S, A and D keys um, for your, your movement up there as well. It's an RGB keyboard, as you can see. We have it on the standard animation at the moment. If you're not an RGB type of person, it's very easy with no configuration to turn the backlight and RGB functionality off by holding function and pressing backspace. You can install software to modify and further configure the uh, RGB backlights. You can do a lot of programming with the keyboard as well. But if you'd like to make some small changes, this can be done by using the function key and some um, of the, the buttons on the keyboard here. So holding function and pressing this button will change the preset of RGB that's been used at a given moment in time. The buttons to the left of that will change the brightness of the RGB. And the one below changes the uh, speed 
of the RGB effects as well. So you can make it nice and fast if you'd like to. One of the things I'd like is that when you come to the maximum, the key flashes to let you know. So if I put this down to the bottom, it flashes to let you know you've hit the lowest point of the, the range, which I thought was uh, a nice touch. So I mentioned at the start that this um, keyboard includes a switch puller as well. So obviously we can take the keycaps off and replace those keycaps with anything of your fancy. And at a later date, if my daughter didn't use this, I might do that, replace the uh, white and pink keys with another color. Maybe I could use it myself or my son might want to use it um, on his machine. Um, but this includes a switch puller as well. This is a hot swappable keyboard and that the Gato and Red switches can be pulled out and replaced um, if you'd like to do so. I should have also mentioned at the start that this actually includes a manual in the box as well. It's just a very short leaflet here. Um, it applies to a few different keyboards as you can see. Um, but this is actually quite good. Uh, provides you all the information you need in the bottom of the, the page here. It gives you all the combinations that you'd like to know in terms of configuring things like the brightness and the, the RGB functionality. If you do have a Bluetooth model, then this would also give you the information you need to um, enable the, the Bluetooth and switch between the USB-C and Bluetooth modes. The only criticism I guess that I have for this keyboard is that these keycaps which come with it, although they're very good, they feel very nice and I'm sure they're going to be very durable, don't have any layers on them. It would have been nice to have the, the, the brightness um, you know, the, the, the brightness and the mode switching icons on some of the keycaps. Uh, and this is typical of, of other manufacturers. Similar with the cursor keys, it'd be nice to have that up down, left and right here. It's very natural, you know, it becomes second nature when you start doing these things. But I think for, you know, my daughter's 11 years old, having the, the legends, I guess, on the keycaps would have been very beneficial for her. So that's all that I've got to say on the keyboard at the moment. It's, it's very nice. I think it represents good value for money. If you were to buy the components and build one of these keyboards from scratch, you're probably going to spend more money, especially with those PBT keycaps. So I think this is a good move. And if you're looking to buy your first or a second mechanical keyboard for another family member, this would be something good to consider. I'm going to finish the video off by doing a little typing test so you can hear how the keyboard sounds when typing. Um, but for now, I'll say goodbye and thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please put them below. Thanks again.